<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Exoplanets Knitting Journal. Uh, I'm excited to be here and talking about everything I knit in 2022. Um, I So just to introduce myself to start off, my name is McKenna and I am a knitter based currently in Florida in the United States, though I'm from North Carolina. Um, I am an astronomy grad student at the University of Florida, and um, I took up knitting in 2020 as a way to alleviate anxiety. Uh, specifically, I like wanted something to do with my hands that would allow me to also think, because most of the things I do like, you know, watching TV or reading books involve me thinking, but my hands don't get busy. I like keeping my hands busy. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I started knitting to help with anxiety, and it's been great. I have just become fully obsessed with it in the, like, two years I've been knitting. It's been a been a great comfort to me. <laughs> um, also, this is Noodle. He'll probably show up a lot. He is very cozy and loves sitting in my lap, so he'll be here. <laughs> but today I wanted to talk about everything I knit in 2022. Um, so I have quite a few things, um, but uh, I'm thinking maybe sometime I could also go over everything I knit in the first like year and a bit of my knitting journey because um, there was a lot I knit there too that I won't be showing right now. You'll see, you'll see. Um, but the first thing I ended up knitting in the year, apparently, I think I probably worked on some other stuff, but according to my Ravelry, this fluffy pink Star Girl Bralette is the first thing I worked on. Uh, so this is a pattern by, uh, let's see, by Uma Murphy, and it's actually a free pattern, um, and it is like fully adjustable, so you can put in your measurements in the pattern, and it'll do some math for you and give you a pattern. And I really like it. Like it worked out. Quite well. The pattern is super simple, so it's just a very basic bralette. It has a v-neck in the front and then a straight back. And then one by one ribbing on the bottom band. I added elastic in mine. You can kind of see it sticking out in some places. Um, but I used two strands of Barocco Indian Mist, which is like a, uh, a Surrey, a silk Surrey, so it's alpaca based, and I find it really soft. Although, honestly, maybe not the best option for a bra because it is a little bit itchy, um, but just to the touch on my face or whatever, it's super soft and I love it. Um, and I thought this would be a good layering piece, so I wear this under other knits all the time because it gives like a pop of pink, pink fuzzy stuff under everything else, which is fun. Also, I guess it would be a warm layer, but I don't really need warm layers down here in Florida, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I, um, let's see, I can link to my Ravelry down below, and I have everything written down there on like what measurements I use to create this. That was fun. And then one of the next things I knitted is a ranunculus. This was the second time I had knit the ranunculus. The first time I knit it, I was really confused. It was one of like the f first things I knit. Um, so I struggled with the pattern quite a lot especially with casting on, but also just 
just with the yolk in general. Um, so I was a little hesitant to try it again, but I really wanted to understand why everyone loved the pattern so much. So I'd, I gave it another shot, and this is a yarn that I picked up secondhand um, from a shop back home in North Carolina, which has a lot of like secondhand art supplies and junk, like hardware supplies, art supplies, etc. Um, so I got this from them, and it's I can tell it's a wool blend, but if you look closely, it's a green and white marled color. It's really quite beautiful. Um, and I'll give you some more close-ups in a bit. Uh, but the second time I met the Rebeculus, I loved it. It was so much fun. It went by so fast. Like, it probably a couple days and I wear this all the time like um, obviously Florida doesn't get super cold but in the winter here in the mornings or something just as a layering piece or in my office which is also very cold this is really wonderful and I, I love it I love the way it fits and everything I will say Noodle caught his claw on it once and uh, yeah, the end, the bottom hem is coming apart a little bit, and I'm not quite sure how to fix it. Maybe I could go back in with some extra yarn and try to fix it. I don't know. But he tore the yarn. <laughs> Anyways, I love this one. Um, I think I just knit it to pattern. Um, yeah, I used the recommended needle size and knit the smallest size available, but I, I think I did make the body a little bit longer than suggested, and it's very cropped on me. Oh, um, so... I... One of the first things I ever knit was an outline tank by Jessie May, and I really loved it, like, the yarn I used was great and I love how the pattern looks but unfortunately that one just didn't fit me super well um, so I decided to try making it again and maybe adjusting it so I made it with this blue cotton yarn um, which is again second hand from that same like craft supply store and this is with let's see Oh, apparently it's a drops yarn. It's called Denim Knit in the color Indigo. And I, I bought it a second hand, like I said. And it's a really thick cotton yarn. It's like maybe a heavy DK to maybe even slightly heavier than that. I don't know. Um, but I will say, unfortunately, I think the outline tank just doesn't fit me well. It's super wide on me and then I like the look of having the longer straps so that the cups start lower down on my body like where my actual bust is but the straps because it's so wide the straps just fall off of my shoulders and it's really hard to adjust the width of this pattern because you have the drop stitches, so you really have to would have to do a lot of math to figure out where the drop stitches would go um, and how wide it would be. Um, so that's unfortunate. I I mean I still wear this, but it's kind of an annoying thing to wear because the sleeves fall down all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just wish it would fit me better. <laughs> I even like tried to adjust it by doing this. I think I did the smallest size and. I, I don't remember what exactly I did, but you'll see the, the front and the back have slightly different triangles. So I think I did the decrease rate slightly differently for one, maybe. So like, I think if I turn it this way, the front sits a little bit lower than the back. But yeah, still doesn't fit well. That makes me sad, because I, I do love that pattern a lot. And I think it's like kind of genius doing the drop stitch as a design feature. It's really cool looking. <laughs> um, 
so after that, I actually don't have this one with me to show you, but I'll insert some photos or maybe footage of it if I can get it. I keep this cardigan at my desk in my office because it's constantly cold in there, but this is a sort of self-drafted cardigan. I, I used the Bellish app back when it was a thing. Unfortunately, Bellish no longer exists, which is really sad, but it was an app where you could like choose your own pattern and this app would like generate a pattern for you with the stitch patterns you wanted, the like features you wanted, the sizes, etc. It's really cool. Um, so I used that to create this pattern, but I also kind of changed the generated one a little bit. Um, so I did. I wanted to do basket stitch, um, which is a really cool stitch that is comprised of just knits and pearls, and it looks like basket weave. It's, it's really cool. Um, and I have this ginormous car cone of cotton yarn that I also got from secondhand. Um, and it was it's in this gorgeous dark green color that you'll see. Um, so I had a ton of it and wanted to make a big cardigan. And initially I wanted it to fit both my partner and I, um, but I definitely made it way too short so it only fits me. Oops. Um, uh, but this cardigan took forever to knit. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, I started it in August 2021 and didn't finish it until June 2022. So it took me almost a year to knit this cardigan. And that's because that cotton yarn killed my fingers. It hurt my hands so badly. Like, it was just so rough on the fingers. It gave me, like, blisters where it would rub against my fingers as I knit. It was, it was terrible. I hated knitting on it. Um, so that's kind of how I learned. I don't love working with cotton yarn because it hurts. Um, but I do wear the cardigan all the time and I'm glad I finished it. Um, and I love the buttons on it and I like the stitch and everything about it. So I'm happy I made it. Um, yeah. I'm sad that Bellish doesn't exist anymore because that was a really cool website. But, oh well. Um, Alright, and then the next one I finished is this cardigan that I'm wearing right now, which is the Copenhagen Cardigan by Petite Knit. Um, I had this yarn, which is um, a Patagonia Organic Merino from Juniper Moon Farm. Um, I had originally bought this to make a sweater for my partner. He, it, you'll see later this sweater that I made for him. Um, he wanted this specific thing. He was basically commissioning me to make the sweater for him, um, and it needed a gray yarn in the background. And because I like to do ethical yarns, and I know my partner didn't want superwash yarn because of the way it's processed and everything. Um, I like tried to find a gray yarn that would work for him, but unfortunately this was too itchy for him. Um, it's fine for me, I think it's really nice, um, but it was too itchy for him, so I had to use it for myself. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, so I made this Copenhagen card cardigan, but I held it, I held the merino with a strand of lace weight brown cashmere that I got from a sweater that I thrifted and then frogged and wound up all the yarn myself and I still have a bunch of that and I'm planning on making more stuff with it but I held a thread of that brown yarn with the gray and it marled really nicely and it softened up the fabric a little bit more which is super nice and this cardigan was a lot of fun to knit it has pockets in it and I was so confused by the construction of these pockets when I was knitting them I was like how the fuck is this gonna turn into a pocket I didn't get it and then I just kept following the pattern and it worked and it was like magic it was awesome um, so I loved that 
and I wear this cardigan all the time too. Um, the only thing is that I haven't added the buttonholes because in the pattern she says to use like an afterthought buttonhole where you just kind of like sew an opening into one of the stitches that already exists and there's no instruction on how to do that and I haven't been able to think of a good way to do it. So if you know of any way to do an afterthought buttonhole, let me know, because I'm curious. And I would like to actually use the buttons. <laughs> Alright, it's getting too hot. I'm gonna have to take it off. But uh, I guess I can actually show it to you a little bit better. So it's a top-down raglan cardigan and it has like a round neck. Maybe I can shove a button through a hole. Okay. So a top down raglan cardigan. Really like simple construction, easy. Knit. Um, I think <coughs> if I made this again, I think I would make the button band and all of the ribbing a little bit thicker, and then I would also make the pockets a lot bigger, um, because it can fit like half of my hand in it, and I can fit my phone in it, but it doesn't, it wouldn't stay for very long if I were doing a lot of activity. I'd like to make bigger pockets. <laughs> yeah, I still love it. And I'll probably knit more again. People have, like, asked me to make one of those for them, so we'll see if I ever get around to that. Okay, um, the next thing I knit in 2022 is behind me. It is the Plumetis Pullover from, um, oh, it's from Pom Pom Magazine. It's the spring... 2022 issue, I guess. I think it's issue 40. It's the one Cat Weaver from Heather and Hops always talks about. Um, she hasn't made this as far as I know, but as soon as I saw this pattern in the pom pom release, I knew I had to knit it because it's so cool. I love the collar and I love the stitch pattern and the fact that it's so transparent. It's like ethereal and wonderful. I just love it so much. Um, so I bought the Pom Pom magazine specifically for this pattern, but hopefully I'll knit some more patterns from it too. Um, and for the first time I ordered some drops yarn for this because I wanted to experiment with the mohair. I, I had bought some secondhand cones of a mystery fiber that I thought was probably mohair. Um, but it was like a really bulky version of what looks like a silk mohair or maybe a nylon and mohair blend. But I think I am allergic to that yarn. Um, but I don't know what exactly it is, so I can't really say. I t all I know is that it itches and it kind of made my eyes itch while I was knitting with it. So I wanted to see if I was allergic to mohair because I, I had knit this brought out with the alpaca and I knew that was fine. So I was experimenting. I did buy drops even though I don't know if it's ethical. Um, I at least know that their silk is kind of ethical because they say they use um, like peace silk in their products which is cool. So that's good. Um, and it is so affordable and I'm, you know, I'm never gonna judge anyone for knitting with what they can knit with. Um, anyways, um, so the pinkish color is Drops Kid Silk in the color 31, I think it's mauve. <coughs> and then the purple on the collar is Drops Flora in the color 9 Amethyst. It's just so nice. I love both of them a lot and I had so much fun knitting this. Like, once you get the stitch pattern down, it's easy. You can just 
keep on going and going and, and the collar design is genius. I've never knit a collar on anything before and it was so fun. Like just the construction of it is clever and I, I love that it has this pico edging too. It's great. And then the back has a little keyhole design and then I got a little wooden button from a thrift store and put that on there too. I love it. It's great. This is an awesome piece for Florida. I mean, it's a little too warm, honestly, but if I wear like nothing but a bra under it, it's nice for the colder days. So I love that one. And so then we got into later summer and I needed, I wanted more like bralettes and tank tops because I had knit myself a few previously and I just wanted more. So I ended up making a um, framework bralette by Jessie Mae and this one, this pattern fits me really well where the outline tank doesn't. So I love this one. Um, this is just a small black bralette in the, let's see, hmm, I don't have it written down what size I did, but it's one of the smaller sizes. Um, and I used, again, a second hand yarn. This one is the Brown Sheep Cotton Fleece, so it's, I think it's like 90% cotton and 10% wool, and man, that 10% wool makes a huge difference. Like, this is so much softer than cotton, and it didn't hurt my hands to knit with at all. And, like, it's just really good. I highly recommend this yarn. I don't know anything about the company, but it's really good. Um, so I knit this, I used, like, less than a skein for it. And I love it. I think I did alter the pattern. I like to have straight across backs for my like bras and tank tops. I don't understand why so many bra and tank top patterns have the triangles on both sides. It doesn't make sense. It uses more yarn and it just looks weird to me. So I did a straight back. Just cast off the stitches and then um, made extra long straps and mattress stitched them where I needed them. So I love that so much that I made another one. <clears throat> um, so this one is a little bit longer so I can wear it as almost more of a tank top. Let's see. Yeah, this one is in Idina Lingarn, so I think it's a mix of linen and cotton and you can actually see little flecks of the linen and things, so it's tweedy almost, which is cool. <coughs> and I did knit the second size in this one, and I think I did it the exact same way, basically. Um, so I cast off the back and then attached longer straps to it. And again, I wear this all the time. This one's a little bit less stretchy than the other one because it doesn't have any wool in it but it's still really nice and I love it a lot. I wear them all the time. I highly recommend this pattern if you haven't tried them and if you like wearing knitted bras and tank tops because it's very useful. Highly, highly recommend. Okay, so remember that cone of mystery fuzzy yarn I talked about? I wanted to get it out of stash and it's a beautiful yarn. I love it so much. Like this color is amazing. Um, so I just, I risked it and I decided to cast on. And this is the Phantom Fuzz by um, Park Williams, Park and Knit. Um, yeah, it's a great basic pattern. Uh, it is meant for more of a lace weight mohair, um, but obviously this is much bulkier. Yeah, I would say it's like a Aran or bulky weight yarn. And like it's great, I love it, but I can't wear it 
because it's just way too itchy. So I'm not sure what I'll do with this, if I'll give it to someone or... I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll donate it somewhere. But it's somehow a garment. So that's cool. Yeah. There's that. It didn't take long to knit at all. It was very simple knit. Calming. Nice to work on. Except for the itchy yarn. Okay. So then I found a bunch of this really cool yarn in a second hand shop here in Gainesville called Repurpose Project, which again has like second hand everything you can think of, like hardware, craft supplies, junk, anything, anything. And they have yarn. And I found this cotton yarn there. I believe it's 100% cotton. Yeah, uh, it's apparently discontinued, but it's the Sporty Sugar and Cream from Lily, uh, so it doesn't exist anymore. But this is the color Taupe, and it's like a muted purpley color. It's really quite beautiful, but I decided to make another ranunculus with it because I liked the last one so much. And this time I did a short, short sleeve version. I have always been hesitant about like knitted t-shirts because I feel like they look strange. It just, it feels wrong to have a knitted t-shirt even though I have all those tank tops and I love them. Something about the t-shirts just seems weird to me. But I did it and I do wear this a lot. Um, although I do kind of feel like it's not really my style, but I still wear it and I love it. Um, but this yarn, man, it's the softest cotton yarn I have ever felt. I, like, I don't know what sort of processing they did to it, but it's really different from most cotton yarn. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it does actually pill a lot, like a soft wool yarn would. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see that. Um, but I don't mind that it pills because it's so soft. It's so nice to wear. Um, yeah, so I made another Nautilus, like, same everything, US 8 needles. Um, I, basically I did the beginning of the long sleeve version of the pattern, but I only knit like an inch or two before I started the ribbing and bound off. Um, yeah. Very simple. Love it. Wear it all the time. Is it my style? I don't know. But that's okay. And then... I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Sorry, noodle. Okay, we're back. We're back. Alright. Chill out, bud. Okay, is it gonna focus? So once I finished the ranunculus, I still had a significant amount of that yarn left over. So I decided to make a golden oak tank. And I've made one of these before. I made it in like a pure silk that I got from that yarn shop going out of business. Um, and I love it. I love the pattern. It's beautiful. And I wanted to try making another one. But I made a couple changes this time, so I made this one really short, um, so it's a lot more cropped on me, and then also, um, I think, I think this is another tank top pattern where it has two triangles on the back and the front, so I changed the back as well, I believe. And generally I made the straps a lot shorter on this one, so it sits a lot higher on my neck which I actually really like. So th I find that this one's a lot more wearable than my previous version because it's shorter and it sits higher. So I love it. And if you haven't seen this pattern before, um, let's see. It's the Golden Oak Tank Top by Amanita Knits. Um, it's really nice. It's such a nice pattern. 
so easy to read. It's got this lovely lace pattern at the bottom that looks like oak leaves. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I love that pattern. It's beautiful. Okay, my heart was full, so lots of interruptions today, but that's okay. Alright, so um, previously I was talking about how my partner wanted me to knit him a sweater and I needed grey yarn for it. Well, he specifically wanted me to knit the cat sweater that Marceline wears in Adventure Time. I'll put up a picture of what that looks like here so you can see. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was really excited because I thought it sounded like a fun challenge. Um, at the time I hadn't really done any sort of color work before, um, so this was my first venture into color work and it was, it's in Tarja with a little bit of duplicate stitch. Um, and I ended up using um, the Alpaca Chino pattern by um, Max, let's see, Maxim Sear, um, so Alpaca Chino by Maxim Sear. And I used that as a basis, although it did change some things. Um, so I, I did a double knit collar, uh, not double knit, but like a folded collar here. Um, and then I also like obviously didn't do the different color baseball sleeves that that one has. Um, but it is a raglan knit flat, which is really interesting. And I'm honestly not sure I'll ever do that construction again was kind of annoying, um, but Intarja is better knit flat, although I think there are ways you can do it in the round. So um, I came up with this chart for the cat face on my own, um, and I might like put it up on Ravelry for free or something, I'm not sure if you can just put charts up there, but if I can, I'll do that because I don't mind if other people just have it. It's very cute. I think the cat face came out super well. Um, the yarn I ended up using, it was Drops Lima. So this is, uh, I made a big order of Drops yarn for this Plumatis pullover and also for this sweater all at the same time. Um, and I was like, well, Drops is affordable, so he can, like, it'll be a more justifiable cost for him. Um, and it should also be soft since it's a commercial yarn and to me this is really soft but unfortunately Forrest, my partner, still said it was too itchy for him <laughs> so um, I knit this whole sweater but it's too itchy for him and it turns out it's also too small for him which I'm so disappointed by like I knit these sleeves to his arms, like I literally tried them on his arms as I was knitting them, and they're just too tight, even after blocking. Um, I think the body of it's okay, it's really just the sleeves, um, but because the yarn is too itchy for him, it doesn't matter because he can't really wear it anyways. So I've been wearing it, and it's great, except the sleeves are way too long on me. So I'm thinking about just like chopping the sleeves off like right here maybe um somewhere here and trying to like pick up stitches here and re-knit them to my sleeve length because this is knit flat and they were knit cuffed up i can't really like unpick it like I can't go from down here so if I wanted to totally redo the sleeves I would have to unpick all of this mattress stitching of the raglan and the collar here and I really don't want to do that so someone let me know can I just pick, like this was knit bottom up can I then cut this and knit top down or will that not work I don't know Someone let me know because I would like this to fit me a little better and one day I will just like bite the bullet and buy some like knitting for olive merino or something something that I know will be super soft that he will like or maybe I will just get super wash yarn because
because I know that will be soft enough for him. I don't know. I will make him one of these though, someday. <laughs> but for now, this is mine. And I'm really happy with this, how it came out, other than the like weird fit things. But it's still really cute and it's so cozy. I was wearing it, like I gave this to my partner for I think our anniversary and it's been way too hot in Florida to wear it. So when I went home to North Carolina for Christmas, I wore this a lot because it got down to like 8 degrees Fahrenheit or something and it was really nice and warm <laughs> for that. So I definitely recommend the like Drops Lima. It's really nice. Uh, I love it. It's so cozy. <laughs> And then I have a couple other things I made this year. Um, this one is really dirty because it's been used a lot, but I, so I went to a thrift store and I found this absolutely bonkers yarn that is like so thick, like it, it's incredibly thick, like I guess blanket sized yarn, I'm not sure if there's a term for how thick this is but it it wasn't synthetic it was it was made of cotton and merino and I was like I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this but there were two different skeins of it each like a hundred grams in two slightly different colors and I just like had to get it it was such a nice yarn so I ended up making a cat bed with it um, yeah I used the biggest needles I had, I think, with, or maybe I might have gone a size down, let's see, mm. I used US 15 needles, so 10 millimeter needles, and the yarn was um, Love Fest Fibers Cloudline yarn, in the weight jumbo apparently, um, yeah, so this took up all um, 200 grams all two skeins, um, so the rim of the cat bed is in the color blush, I think, and then the base of the bed is in the color toasted coconut. Um, but I just basically knit a giant rectangle and then picked up stitches all the way around it for the edges of the bed. And um, it hurt my hands so bad, I do not think I will ever knit something this chunky again because it was so hard to knit. I think I actually like, like I had to ice my wrist because it was hurting so much after knitting on this and that's ridiculous. Um, so I'll probably never do this again but Noodle does like it. He sleeps in it a lot and yeah, I think it, it was fun to make. I, I made this like right when I got him in August. Um, so, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, one of the last things I knit this year... Where did the other one go? How did I lose it? Um, it was actually my first ever test knit. Um, these are also kind of dirty because they've been worn. Gifted these to my partner for Christmas, <laughs> so he's been wearing them a lot. Um, but they are the Irishman knit socks <coughs> by Poppy Joe. Let's see if she has a different name on Ravelry. Yes, yeah, she uses the name Megan Valenti on Ravelry, so that's her designer name. Um, and this is pattern number three, so the Irishman knit socks. Irishman sweater socks, sorry. The Irishman sweater socks comes with three different sock patterns, and this is the third pattern, which is the cabled sock pattern. It is a really beautiful sock pattern. I haven't, I like, I knit a lot of socks, and I haven't showed you all the socks I've knitted this year because I knit a lot of socks. They're pretty much all vanilla socks with afterthought heels and I just constantly have one on the needles like there's one over here somewhere 
because I, I like carrying them to meetings and lectures and things and just landing on them constantly. But <coughs> these are different and they took so much effort. Like, I don't know if I'll ever knit cabled socks again, honestly, because it's a lot of like counting and paying attention to where you are. And I like socks for relaxing, simple knits. So because this was my first test knit, I did I decided to splurge on some yarn. So I got the Woolberry Fiber Co. Berry Tweed Fingering in the color Toffee Chip. And I, I um, I've been eyeing Woolberry for a very long time because they have like ethical and sustainable practices for the yarn, and also these color berries are just beautiful. I love them a lot. Um, so this is my first Woolberry, and I love it. It's it's so beautiful and it's so soft. It is super wash, but that's okay. Every once in a while, it's really good for socks. I find that my feet are really sensitive to wool, so a super wash actually works a lot better for me. And um, I was assigned to test knit the size large, so I ended up making these for my partner. And he's also sensitive to wool, so I figured that would be good for him. And he loves these. He wears them a lot. So, yeah, definitely recommend those. Why did I sign up for a test knit during the week between Thanksgiving and finals? I don't know. It was stressful. But I did it, and got beautiful socks out of it, and I finished that semester, so that's fine. Um, yeah. So these were basically the last thing I finished knitting. Oh, fudge, that's not true. Because of me and my brother are frog. I'll have to get him to take some footage of it. Um, so I made the frog by, um, oh, it's, it's the frog that everybody makes. Oh, what's the name? By Claire Garland. Um, so I made him a little stuffed frog with some leftover yarn that I had. Um, and that that yarn is Coast to Coast Yarn Co. And their non-superwash fingering base. And it's in two of their mushroom colorways. Um, Verdant and Brittle Gill. And I'll, in future videos, I'll show you the main project I've been making with that. I just finished it, like, last week. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I made my brother a frog, and it was so much fun. I'm gonna make so many more frogs, they're really great. Um, and then I also, like, made some other socks for other people, but I won't share those. Or maybe I'll, like, do a flash of a bunch of sock pictures real quick or something. I don't know. But yeah, that was my 2022 in knitting form. Um, I'm still loving knitting. I haven't gotten tired of it yet. I just want to knit all the time and not do my work. Um, but that's okay, because I love it. So yeah, uh, thanks for joining me here, everyone. Uh, hopefully I will continue making videos whenever I have a little bit of time. I hope to do a more like traditional knitting podcast style video. Um, where I show you what I'm working on and what I finished recently and everything. Um, but yeah, we'll see what I get to. And let me know if you want to see everything I've knitted prior to 2022, because I can share that too if you want. Um, yeah, alright. Well, I'll see you all later.